A few months ago, LIGO, which stands for the um, Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, confirmed the existence of gravitational waves. And a gravitational wave is caused by the collision of black holes, and they collide and then they become one. And the amount of force contained in this is so far beyond what's contained in our sun. It's so much more than all the known mass in the universe. When they collided over a billion years ago, they released energy in the form of, of this gravitational wave that is a movement in the fabric of space-time, a ripple in the fabric of space-time. So why is this significant? Well. This is other than the fact that it's a ripple in space-time, which kind of makes your brain go a little bit like this, like space and time is moving this way. It really, it proved a very important uh, part of Einstein's theory of general relativity. And he conceived that over a hundred years ago when he put forth um, E equals mc squared. And a hundred years ago, Einstein took math and geometry that any first-year algebra student would know. And from those tools, you know, nothing really fancy, no big technology, nothing special, but just basic math and geometry. And from that, postulated the theory of relativity. And what's, that's phenomenal in and of itself, but what's really phenomenal about that is that what enabled Einstein to do that was not the special tools he had, or the education, or any special circumstances. It's that he was able to suspend his belief in something that people thought was constant and universal and immutable. He suspended his belief that time was constant. And if you think about that for a moment, and you think about how much time is a part of our lives, like right now I'm looking at this giant, like blipping thing telling me how much time I have left to talk to you, right? So the, this, this concept that he was able to use his imagination and suspend this thought that time is always the same allowed him to create this theory. And that was over 100 years ago. His ability to let go of something that we thought he might have thought was a law, you can refer to this as having beginner's mind. And a beginner's mind is one where you approach the world and you just assume that so many things are possible. You assume that more is possible than that is impossible. And for Einstein and so many geniuses, so many scientists, so many people, Having that assumption of walking into a situation, whether it's a new situation, old situation, but walking into life, assuming that there are possibilities that you don't know about, that there are things, there are events, there, there's so much that is unknown and unknowable, and that that is a good thing. That is perhaps, that and his imagination, his openness and imagination were two of the things that were foundational to his being a scientific genius. So I'm not a trained physicist, but I knew, do know a little bit about openness and about imagination. And when you set those things forward and you create the conditions where people's imagination can lead to these incredible discoveries, you set something incredible in motion. You set the foundation for knowing things, for creating things together. And when you think about what it took for the folks who were part of LIGO, to discover, to confirm that there are gravitational waves. It took over a 1,000 scientists, hundreds of students, 14 countries, 90 universities, 40 years of work to create the technology that a man over 100 years ago had an imagination to conceive. And so that's amazing to me. That's thousands of hours, so much effort, crossing all kinds of barriers to confirm this thing that we could barely see, barely detect for milliseconds. And so it makes you think, what is it that allows us to do good science, that allows us to theorize these things? And it's really, it's, it's three things, right? We assume that we need a lot of technology. We need you know, more technology, more better. We need more learning. We need to go to school for a long time. But we don't really need those things more than we need imagination. We need to let go of what we think is absolute and you know this is never gonna happen and this will always happen. We need to let go of that. And then we need faith, like those thousands of scientists had when they were chasing this thing that they were pretty sure existed, but they didn't have proof. And to create the technology to prove that this gravitational wave existed took decades. So they had faith. A crazy guy 100 years ago had imagination. And then it was a lot of hard work after that. 
that made things come to this point where we can talk about ripples in space-time as fact, as something that is really true. And that is amazing. So when you think about right now, where you are, right here, right now, what is it that you hold inside yourself that you think is impossible? If all you have is this moment, and this moment, and this moment, and that's it, and there's no such thing as time, and there are no limitations, but you have this moment, is there anything that's impossible? Or are there thousands and thousands of choices that you could make, thousands and thousands of places you could go that you could create in this one moment? You know, um, Caltech physicist Kip Thorne was part of the LIGO team. He spent his whole career building, funding, chasing this project to prove the gravitational waves. And that's a real example of faith. He got money, time, all kinds of things to make sure that he was able to prove this. And I can only imagine what kind of a day it was on the day that the, that the two LIGO detectors proved that these gravitational waves were rippling through the Earth. Kip Thorne, like Carl Sagan and like Einstein, like the kids in your classrooms, like you, like people that you know, they start with this expectation of the impossible. They start with this openness that something amazing that I don't know, that is perhaps not knowable right now, that it exists, that it's there. It's the expectation. It's the beginner's mind that sets the foundation for a wave that ripples through the earth. This is the fertile ground where art and science and faith and humanity can all find a happy little neighborhood together. Because if you approach all of this with this holistic sense of the universe, if you have this rich appreciation like all these philosophers and scientists and, and, and creative people in the universe, that's when real magic can happen, when you are open to that absolute possibility. So if you agree with Joseph Campbell that eternity is only now, right now, and that the purpose of life is to be in eternity right now, then I ask you, how precious, how precious is that breath that you're taking right now? How precious is that thought that you choose to think right now? How precious is everything that you hold in you right now, and how many possibilities come out of that preciousness? How amazing is that? How magical? is that. So if I could leave you with one thought, it would be to bring your beginner's mind to everything that you do, to be open to all the possibilities in the universe, the possibilities in each other, and to expect that the unknowable and the incredible is there waiting for you to be the person to create the conditions to shape the universe. Thank you.